What's up guys, got another video review for you. This time we're taking a look at Hunt for the Decepticons Breacher. Now when I bought this guy, I actually didn't even know that I was buying him. I was looking on eBay and I noticed uh, a transfer. Sometimes I don't just, sometimes I just look on eBay and see what's, what, uh, sometimes people don't know what they have. So maybe you can get some cheap transformers, but then somebody's find something in their basement and they don't know what they are. Um, so I found somebody selling a uh, sea spray. And I was like, oh, well, I need a sea spray. Uh, and it came with two extra figures. Uh, it turns out this was one of them. There was another one, Flame something. Uh, I might review him at some point, too. But So when I got sea spray, I was like, oh, cool sea spray. And I found this guy. And I was like, wait a minute. This guy looks familiar. And then I found out he was Breacher. And I was like, awesome. Because I never had him. And I kind of wanted him. Um, he also goes with sea spray. Um, sea spray is molded with... In the in the the cab, I guess the carrier section of Sea Spray has this kind of uh, angled cut in him, so that he can kind of lock into him and drive around with him. And yeah, whatever, it's it is what it is. This has an extra little bonus, but I was very happy to get him. Uh, I also have his repaint. Who is re, he was repainted in the um, GDO line, Generations GDO line as Bra uh, Brawl, which I don't get because. He's not a tank, and Brawl is a tank. So this guy is a like an APC, an armored personnel carrier. Um, you know, it's supposed to be like an armored armored truck kind of deal. Um, he has a turret which rotate, which um, pivots, which is pretty cool. It also rotates this way. Um, it's actually this guy is actually very very neat and clean. You can barely see, like you can easily all the the cracks, the cracks and crevices and such for transformation. Let me zoom in here. I mean, you can, they can easily pass as just regular detailing, which I really, really dig. Like right here, you can see a crack that doesn't that looks out of place. But I mean, overall, he's incredibly neat, incredibly clean, and incredibly compact. And his transformation is actually fairly complex. So hopefully, I'll do a good job of showing you guys how to actually transform him properly. But even underneath, he's very clean. I'm very surprised that such this is a scout figure. So he's not, you know, he's not a deluxe figure. If he was a deluxe, he'd be like probably that big. But I mean, it's such a tiny package. It's amazing, just how much engineering they got in this guy. It's really cool. I really dig him. It does roll very nicely. And like I said, the turret rotates and pivots. Anyway. Let's transform this guy. So first of all, you're gonna take the guns off. It's just on a three millimeter peg. See it right there. There's the peg, and it just pegs on. It just pegs on right, right here. So you just pop it off, and we'll set that to the side. Okay. Now, what you wanna do is rotate this all the way around, like that. And we're going to more or less crack this guy in half. Actually, no, I lied. First thing you want to do is come back here and just push on that, the back door, and just push it all the way down. Next, you're going to come back here and get your finger in between this clip point and, and that panel. Just pop that panel off on both sides. Next, you're gonna, now you're going to split this guy in half, just like that, just right here at that crack I showed you before. <clears throat> Sorry. Fold it down. You see the hips and the legs in there. And then you're just going to push this the rest of the way down, put that straight. And you're going to... Well, we won't rotate it yet. I'll leave that for now. I also just accidentally split the legs, so I'll go ahead and do that. Come up to the front. And there's a little flap right there. <clears throat> oh, I really need a drink. So you lift this flap up, just like that. And then we also, you gotta just pull the, okay, let me show you this now. These are the shoulders, these white parts. If you notice, so when, I'm just gonna split this side off. You can see there's a little tiny peg and a little, and a hole right there. And when you transform it back, you peg that in. 
and there's also another peg up in this section. So we're gonna unpeg that. I mean, I'm not in that section. This section, it kind of it, it like grooves in there. You'll know when you when you play with it. So we're just gonna pull that off on both sides, lift it up and out of the way, and then we're gonna come over here to the cockpit section. And just rotate that around. The head's right there. I don't want you to see it. So you come back here. Now you can rotate this. We'll get that out of the way. Rotate this around, and that'll kind of click into place. You'll feel it. Come over here to the feet, and just pull the feet down and rotate them around. They're just sitting on the sides of the inside of the leg. And then you fold the back panels that we opened before all the way shut until they, until they close. And then we have the legs done. So now we come up. Then we also want to close this panel right here. The butt panel will just fold down. And you want to make sure that the turret is faced, the, not the turret, well, it used to be the turret, this top section. Because you see there's a groove that this whole white section, there's a peg hole there, and a peg there, and there's a groove. And then that will go like that and peg in which we don't want to do yet, I'm sorry, because we have to work with the top first. So we just rotate this sec, the, okay. You want to rotate this, just the middle part of this section around, exposing the head, and that will give you the clearance to snap that in. The shoulders and the arms are on kind of funky joints. This whole thing is very, very funky, but it's very cool. You want to rotate it around, and then you want to flip the hand up, and then this section, like the door section, let me see if I can show you, is on a clip. See the clip in there? And it's on a little peg, or a little, you know, rail. So you want to rotate that around. And say, and it, like I said, it has a tendency to pop off just like that. But you just pop it back on. And we'll clean this up here in a, in a second. Oh, I really should have done this again. There we go. There we go. And you want to make sure that's up. So let me zoom out. Okay. Again. Rotate it that way. Rotate it around, push the fist out, rotate the shield section up. Yeah, that's right. And basically, there we have Breacher in robot mode. Stay. Is that the right way? Yeah, that's right. The wheels go in the back. No, don't be ridiculous. That was right the first time. So there we have Breacher, like I said, in robot mode. Stay. Like I said, it's very hard to do this through a camel lens. Okay, let's take a look at his awesome face. He's got a really cool head sculpt. He is an Autobot, as you can see. That's the only decal. But his head is very, very cool. There's no light piping. But he has, everything is painted, but it does look very, very, very cool. I do dig that a whole lot. So for his gun, well, let me show you the articulation. Everything on this guy is ball jointed. This guy is basically one gigantic ball joint. Head is on a ball joint. You can look almost straight up. Uh, mine's a little uh, kind of stiff, but it likes to lock in certain places, like there, 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 just for whatever reason. The arms are on a ball joint. Actually, no, the arms are on a, the elbow, the shoulders are on a swivel joint for transformation. Same thing over here. There's two, two joints. This one's on a swivel and this one's on a, I guess, a pivot. Um, that's just for transformation. 
elbows are on a ball, but um, you can only put them straight like that, that way, and they do just go 90 degrees. Um, wrists are on a ball, well, they rotate all the way around, and they fold just down for transformation. That doesn't really help you in posing it, but it's there if you need it. Hips, uh, waist is uh, 360 degrees because of the transformation, but I mean, it does look stupid. So you can't really use it, which is a shame. But yeah, what are you gonna do? Hips are on a ball. Knees are on a hinge. Feet are on a ball. Um, you can't, they have a pivot because of the transformation, but you can't go that way. You can only go in because the plastic stops it right there. You can get a little bit that way, but not a hell of a lot. And then the only, one of the only downsides is that because of his size, I'll show you with this fist, his fists are just completely molded. They're just molded shut. And it's hard to see, but see, it's just a solid chunk. But he has three millimeter clips everywhere. So he's got three millimeter clips on his fists. Right there. He's got three millimeter clips on his shoulders, or on his forearms, from the from the doors. Um, he's got three millimeter clips on his back, here, here, and here. So basically, this gun can connect almost anywhere with three millimeter clips. So what's weird is the instructions. This is so hard to do from behind the camera when you're looking through the camera itself. It's not even funny. Anyway, the instructions tell you to store the gun back on the turret thusly. Like I said, it's fine if you don't want him um, holding the gun in any way, shape, or form. It's a perfectly fine place to store it. But everybody needs a gun. So, unclip it from there. Also, it's um, this is where it connects on vehicle mode. This thing is perfectly fit, so that when you pivot it, it you know it always lines up perfectly. It's a nice little touch. I forgot to mention that. Um, if you, from, at least on mine, the fist clips are a little loose. So when I do connect it, it kind of flops. Like. I mean, I guess you can probably, I can probably pose it with it and it'll be fine. But I don't even like the way that looks, to be honest with you, in general. It's the same way on the other side, too, with it. The way I like to display it is to clip it back here. Just like that. And it's on a ball joint. <laughs> like I said, this thing is ball jointed everywhere. So you can actually bend it and put it flush up against the forearm panel. And I will focus here right now. And if you ask me, the only thing is it's not perfectly in line with his forearm. So you have to bend the elbow. The arm, the hand is pointing up on an angle to get it to sit flush. Probably, you know, parallel with him or perpendicular to him. So that's the only downside with that. But I mean, so he's like, Arr! So he has to, you know, angle his fist up a little bit to make him shoot straight, but... I don't know. I kind of like it. I think that looks really, really cool. Stop falling over. It's very hard to do this from behind the camera, I tell you. Anyway. So, if you can find this guy, for him, Sea Spray and um, Flame Blast, I think his name is, or Flame, flame Fire, Flame Guy. I think I paid like 20 something dollars, so I mean, I'm totally happy with that. Just for a quick comparison, a size comparison, here he is with the grind rod. Pull it back a little bit. So, good little size comparison. He's more or less deluxe sized, so you can see, you know, the actual height comparison. Get him out of the way. But I mean, he is a standard stout, scout sized figure. Um, you can find him as Breacher. 
I think... See, the thing is with... You can find him now in stores as Brawl very easily. I mean, I found him for, you know, standard 10... Oh, well, now they're 10 bucks, but for a standard $10 price. If you can't find this guy as this, as Breacher, I've seen him at toy conventions sealed in the package for less than $15. If you happen to find him, pick him up. He is very, very cool. I am totally happy with him. Um, don't go... I wouldn't go crazy. Um, if you just want the mold, which I highly suggest, just get Brawl. His colors are funky, like his blue here is green, but it's like a, you know, like a puke green. Like, you know, Brawl is supposed to be, like the army green. And the white is all like this dark purple magenta color. So, I mean, the colors work for Brawl, but he doesn't remind me of Brawl, I'm sorry. He's an, a he's an armored personnel carrier, an APC. Brawl's supposed to be a tank. But Breacher is totally awesome. When he's in ro when he's in vehicle mode, he's so compact and tight, you can't even tell he's a transformer. That's what I love. That's also what I love about about Grind Rod here. If that was just you know sitting around, you would totally just think it was a you know it was a vehicle. And that's why I totally dig about him, and that's why I totally dig about uh, Breacher. And he's I can't believe just how articulated he is for a scout figure. He's also you know he's very well balanced. I mean, you can get some, look at that, you get some pretty darn good range of motion. Oh, well, if I hit it directly, of course it's going to fall over, but I mean, he's totally stable. For having everything ball joints. Now I can't get him to stay. Oh, well, you saw it. You did see it, right? I broke it. And yeah, now I can't get him to stay. But as you can see, he's got totally awesome range of motion. He's just an all-around amazing, amazing figure. Like the only downside is just basically his fists. At least on mine, they're you know they're wobbly. There we go. I mean, come on, that's awesome. So yeah, like I said, if you can find him as Breacher, pick him up. If you only find him as Brawl on, in the GDO Generations line, still pick him up. Totally awesome figure. Find him, get him. He deserves to be in your collection. This has been Hunt for the Decepticons, Scout Class, Autobot, Breacher.